I'm from Myanmar. I accepted Almighty God's Word of the Last Days in 2019. I learned from reading God's words that God performs His judgment work in the last days to fully save man from Satan's influence, bringing us into a beautiful destination. I'm so grateful for God's salvation. Since disasters are growing and growing, and many people who long for God's appearance haven't heard His voice or accepted His last day's salvation, I was feeling anxious and had a sense of urgency. So I prayed, asking God to guide me to spread His last day's gospel to more people. I heard you faced a lot of difficulties when you spread the gospel then. I did. In early July 2022, I went with some brothers and sisters to a village to spread the gospel. A brother had been reported and arrested for preaching there, so the village chief told the residents not to be religious every time he came back from a county government meeting. If any believers were discovered, they'd be fined a lot of money or even arrested. So no one dared listen to what we were preaching. They said we should talk to the village chief first, before they'd listen. I was an outsider. Those who spread the gospel with me were all from neighboring villages, and we didn't know the chief. The locals wouldn't take us to see him either. I didn't know how to resolve these difficulties, and we were in danger of being reported and arrested at any time. I said a prayer asking God to show us the way. We read a passage of God's words in a gathering. Almighty God says, You must have faith that everything is in God's hands and that humans are merely cooperating with Him. If your heart is sincere, God will see it and He will open up all paths for you, making difficulties no longer difficult. This is the faith you must have. Therefore, you need not worry about anything while you perform your duty, as long as you use all your strength and put your heart into it. God will not make things difficult for you or force you to do what you are not capable of. Amen. God's words gave me faith and strength. No matter how hard sharing the gospel was or how much the government oppressed us, whether I could meet the village chief or was reported and arrested was all entirely in God's hands. Expanding the gospel is God's directive, something that God wants completed. Even if the government oppressed it and the chief impeded it, they couldn't stop the expansion of God's kingdom gospel. They couldn't stop God's sheep from returning to him. As long as we put all we had into our work, I knew God would show the way and open up a path for us. Once we understood God's will, we all had the confidence to go share the gospel. It turned out that a brother from a nearby village was related to the chief. He said he'd take us to see the chief the following day. That was God opening a path. It was. That evening, we got back to the village and went to preach to some locals with good humanity. As we were fellowshipping, the village deputy chief and treasurer showed up unexpectedly, then left after listening for a bit. A resident said, They came to see if you guys were preaching the gospel. We shouldn't listen anymore. First, go talk to the village chief, and we'll listen more if he agrees. We had no choice but to leave. Back at home, I was feeling pretty down. The deputy chief knew we were sharing the gospel. If he got in the way, the villagers really wouldn't look into the true way. Also, when that brother got arrested before, it was from being reported by the treasurer. Worried about being arrested myself too, I didn't want to go talk to the village chief. How did you resolve your state? The supervisor found out about my state and fellowshiped with me. 
faced with that sort of situation, we can't pull back. We have to use that chance to share the gospel with them. As long as we fulfill our responsibilities, whether they accept the gospel or not, our conscience will be clear. Right then, I thought of a passage of God's words I'd read before. Almighty God says, In spreading the gospel, you must fulfill your responsibility and deal earnestly with everyone to whom you spread it. God saves people to the greatest extent possible, and you must be mindful of God's will. You must not carelessly pass over anyone who is seeking and considering the true way. As long as they are willing to consider the true way and able to seek the truth, you should do all you can to read more of God's words to them and fellowship more of the truth to them and to testify to God's work and resolve their notions and questions so that you may gain them and bring them before God. This is what is in line with the principles of spreading the gospel. So how can they be gained? If, in the process of engaging with them, you ascertain that this person is of good caliber and good humanity, you must do everything you can to fulfill your responsibility. You must pay a certain price and use certain ways and means. And it doesn't matter what ways and means you employ as long as they are in order to gain them. In sum, you must, in order to gain them, fulfill your responsibility and use love and do everything within your power. You must fellowship on all the truths that you understand and do all the things you should do. Even if this person is not gained, you will be left with a clear conscience. This is doing all you can and ought to do. Amen. It's true. God's words tell us that when preaching, we have to fulfill our responsibility to have a clear conscience. As long as the person being preached to fits the principles, we should share the gospel with them in any way possible. The villagers were interested in investigating the true way. It was only because of the government's oppression that they were scared of being fined or arrested and wouldn't listen. I should fulfill my responsibility and fellowship more on God's words, resolving their issues and struggles. If the village chief was a good person, who is ready to listen to God's words, I should try everything to preach to him. That would be truly fulfilling my responsibility. But if I didn't share the gospel out of fear of being reported and arrested, then I would owe God. Once I understood God's will, I had the confidence to talk to the chief and preach to the villagers. The next day, that brother took us to the chief's home. The deputy chief and treasurer were there too. We fellowshiped on God's three stages of work to save mankind, that we're now in the last days, and Almighty God is the coming of the Savior. He is expressing truths and doing the work of judgment to purify and save man. We have to accept His judgment and cleansing to be protected by God through the disasters, and enter his kingdom. How was their attitude after that? The village chief was intrigued and wanted to investigate. Both the deputy chief and the treasurer had a bad attitude, though. They said, we're listening to the government. They don't allow religious beliefs, so we can't believe. Otherwise, we'll be arrested. Seeing they were really firm in their stance, I prayed to God, entrusting them to God and asking Him to lead. Then I read them a passage of Almighty God's words. Almighty God says, Perhaps your country currently prospers, but if you allow your people to stray from God, then it shall find itself increasingly bereft of the blessings of God. The civilization of your country shall be increasingly trampled underfoot, 
and before long, the people shall rise up against God and curse heaven. And so, unbeknownst to man, the fate of a country shall be ruined. God shall raise up powerful countries to deal with those countries that have been cursed by God, and may even wipe them from the face of the earth. The rise and fall of a country or nation is predicted upon whether its rulers worship God and whether they lead their people to become closer to God and to worship Him. Amen. Then I fellowshiped. The government doesn't allow faith now, and it even opposes God. You're listening to them and don't dare believe. Who can really save people? Is it God or the government? The pandemic is getting worse and worse these days. Whether rich or poor, powerful or weak, humans are insignificant in the face of disaster. No person can save us from Satan's power or protect us through the disasters. Only God can save us. God has become flesh in the last days, expressing truths and working to save man. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You all are in charge of this village. The villagers' fates depend on how you lead them. If you don't lead them to worship God, but instead oppose Him, then this village will be damned and everyone's fates will have been ruined by all of you. The village chief then said, I believe that people's fates are in God's hands and I want to guide the villagers to believe in God. And the others? The treasurer said, I know having faith is good, but we'll be arrested by the government if we don't comply with them. Our hands are tied. We watched a video reading of God's words. We trust that no country or power can stand in the way of what God wishes to achieve. Those that obstruct God's work, resist the word of God, disturb and impair the plan of God shall ultimately be punished by God. He who defies the work of God shall be sent to hell. Any country that defies the work of God shall be destroyed. Any nation that rises up to oppose the work of God shall be wiped from this earth and shall cease to exist. I urge the people of all nations, countries, and even industries to listen to the voice of God, to behold the work of God, to pay attention to the fate of mankind, thus making God the most holy, the most honorable, the highest, and the only object of worship among mankind, and allowing the whole of mankind to live under the blessing of God, just as the descendants of Abraham lived under the promise of Jehovah, and just as Adam and Eve, who were originally made by God, lived in the Garden of Eden. Amen. I fellowshiped. God's disposition tolerates no human offense. He will punish all those who go against His work. That's God's righteous disposition, and no one can escape it. Disasters are continuing to grow. It is God's reminder and warning to mankind, as well as the punishment. Like the one trend earthquake in China, the people there didn't worship God. Brothers and sisters shared the gospel with them, but they didn't accept it, even insulting brothers and sisters and blaspheming God. When the earthquake struck, they were all weeping and gnashing their teeth, but regrets came too late. The southern part of Wa State in Myanmar also goes against God's work. The government often arrests believers and doesn't permit acceptance of Almighty God's work. This June, there was a flood there, and many houses were swept away. The great disasters haven't come upon us yet, so this is God still giving us chances to repent. If the disasters come, regrets will be too late. Offending other people won't matter at all, but
but the consequences of resisting God will be serious. We've all done things against God before, but as long as we repent to God and we guide the villagers to investigate the true way and turn toward God, God will have mercy and forgive us. After my fellowship, the treasurer's attitude seemed to loosen up a bit. The chief and the others all agreed to let us share the gospel with the villagers. Almighty God's words conquered them. Exactly. The next morning, we called the villagers together and gave them testimony on God's work of the last days. After more than 10 days of fellowship, over 40 people in the village, including the chief and deputy of chief, had all accepted Almighty God's work. They longed for God's words, eagerly participating in gatherings, and proactively got others to come listen to sermons. Later, with brothers and sisters pulling together and working hard, many villagers in Myanmar's villages accepted Almighty God's work. I heard the police looked for you everywhere after that, and they arrested your mom. That's right. I've been reported a few times for spreading the gospel. Most people from my hometown knew I believed in Almighty God, and the police were looking for me everywhere. Since I wasn't at home, they went to my parents' house, then arrested and locked up my unbeliever mother. I was furious. My faith was right and proper, and sharing the gospel was also the right thing to do. The government hunted me everywhere because of my faith and say they wouldn't free my mom until they got me. Where's the fairness or justice? My family didn't understand me, saying that it was my faith that got my mom arrested. They called me up and accused me of being heartless. My brother and sister even told me I should turn myself in. I was miserable and really worried that my mom would suffer. I kept on sharing the gospel, but not as actively as before. In my pain, I prayed to God. Oh God, my stature is too small. My mom was arrested and my family isn't understanding. I'm really miserable. Please give me faith so that I can stand strong. I read God's words after praying. Almighty God says, There is not one person among you who is protected by the law. You are, instead, sanctioned by the law. Even more problematic is that people do not understand you, be it your relatives, your parents, your friends, or your colleagues. None of them understand you. When you are abandoned by God, it is impossible for you to continue living on earth. But even so, people cannot bear to be away from God, which is the significance of God's conquest of people and is the glory of God. Amen. God's words really pulled at my heartstrings. As believers, sharing the gospel and taking the right path in life is the most righteous thing in this world. But not only do believers fail to get legal protection in anti-God countries, they are condemned and arrested, and even their family members are implicated. The government says drug traffickers and murderers can be pardoned. Only believers can't be pardoned. Also, once a believer is caught, they're fined, imprisoned, or given to an official as a laborer. Believers aren't treated like humans at all. This is such a dark and evil country. It's the modern day Sodom opposed to God. Being a believer, following God today means being persecuted, but I understood God's will. God was using those difficulties to perfect my faith while also allowing me to gain discernment over the government's evil essence of opposing God so I could reject and forsake Satan and truly turn toward God. I didn't feel as awful once I'd understood God's will. I felt ready to rely on God 
and keep sharing the gospel. Thank God. We can see that God's wisdom is exercised based on Satan's tricks. The more Satan's forces oppress us, the more it can perfect our faith. With the government so oppressive and arresting Christians, didn't those new to the faith feel timid and afraid? They did. Later, I brought the new believers together and gave them fellowship on God's words to help them know God's work and understand His will. We listened to a hymn of God's words together. Time loss will never come again. Awaken brothers, awaken sisters. My day will not be delayed. Time is life, and to seize back time is to save life. The time is not far off. If you fail the college entrance examination, you can study and retake it as many times as you like. However, my day will brook no further delay. Remember, remember, I urge you with these good words. The end of the world unfolds before your very eyes and great disasters rapidly draw near. Which is more important? Your life or your sleep, your food and drink and clothing? The time has come for you to weigh these things. After listening to the hymn, I fellowshiped. Some people say they'll believe once Satan's forces fall and there's no more oppression, but then God's work to save mankind will be over and we will have utterly lost our chance at God's salvation. If we're held back by the government and we don't dare have faith if it says not to, then can the government save us instead? Of course not. Only God can save us. If we listen to them and don't believe, then we'll lose God's salvation in the last days. When God's work ends, we'll be destroyed along with the government. We've suffered from the government's suppression and arrests because of our faith. But this suffering has value. We have to pay a price if we want to receive God's salvation. And God rules over everything. So whether we're arrested is entirely in His hands. If we are arrested, it is with God's permission. We should submit to Him and learn our lesson. Then I read more of Almighty God's words. Almighty God says, Those whom God refers to as overcomers are those who are still able to stand witness and maintain their confidence and devotion to God when under the influence of Satan and while being laid siege to by Satan. That is, when they find themselves amidst the forces of darkness. If you are still able to keep a pure heart before God and maintain your genuine love for God no matter what, then you are standing witness in front of God. And this is what God refers to as being an overcomer. You should now see that the reason God does not destroy Satan in the time of his salvation of man is that humans may see clearly how Satan has corrupted them and the extent to which it has corrupted them and how God purifies and saves them. Ultimately, when people have understood the truth and clearly seen Satan's odious countenance and beheld the monstrous sin of Satan's corruption of them, God will destroy Satan, showing them his righteousness. Amen. Everyone must have been encouraged by God's words. They were. I fellowshiped. God allows the government's oppression and arrests. This is testing if we truly believe in God, if we have faith or not. Through this kind of oppression and hardship, if we can maintain our faith, and do not shrink back in negativity or betray God, but instead keep following God, gathering and sharing the gospel, then that is having testimony, and Satan will be shamed and defeated. That suffering has value. Why doesn't God just destroy Satan right now? It is to use Satan as a way to perfect a group of overcomers 
while also having us learn to discern good from evil. We can see how God works to save people and how Satan corrupts and hurts people. Then one day when God destroys Satan, we will see how righteous God is. If God just directly wiped Satan out, we'd have no discernment over Satan and we wouldn't hate and forsake it. Just like those anti-God regimes of Satan, they're really good at disguise and deception. When they appear to do some good things, it's just so that people will adore them. Almighty God has appeared and is working in the last days to save mankind. He has exposed those regimes' demonic essence of opposing God. They deny and condemn Almighty God and arrest, fine, sentence, and imprison his believers. They're just like the devil Satan, which gets people to worship it and doesn't allow them to believe in and follow God. Ultimately, they'll all go down to hell and be punished along with it. In the midst of oppression and difficulties, understanding that aspect of the truth is key. It is. After fellowship, the newcomers had discernment and faith and all actively engaged in the gathering. I was really happy. After that, those new believers brought some of their loved ones to come listen to sermons. After a few days, over 80 people from that village had accepted Almighty God's work of the last days. Thank God. Yes. I saw God's wisdom exercised based on Satan's trickery. Satan played all sorts of tricks to stop the gospel work, to leave us frustrated and depressed. But God's words gave us faith and strength. We put all we had into sharing the gospel and saw God's guidance and blessings. I was really grateful to God. I saw that no human can stop what God wants to complete, and I gained even more faith for sharing the gospel. The more hardships there are, the more we can see God's deeds. All this was achieved through God's words. Yes, thank God.